we have a very large, very powerful communication sector in South Africa. It's not known for giving anything away, though. Um, is it time that the South African telecommunication sector wised up to the sort of trends that are happening in Europe, for example? You, you are, for sure, they also will do their, bring their contribution to this. There are different ways of doing this, which, of course, have to be customized to the local context, to the, the cult, uh, social principles, and so on. But the social responsibility almost all operators take on, because in the long run, to achieve sustainability in their development, in their credibility in society, it's a plus, it's not a minus. How vulnerable are these devices? Um, and I asked this question, I was at an internet security uh, conference a couple of weeks ago, and they were talking about increasingly you start seeing phishing attacks, you're starting to see that sort of cyber crime going from the internet where it's been prevalent and going onto cell phones as well. Increasingly, as we use these devices for more and more activities, they surely are going to become more and more vulnerable. The, the mobile devices are, at this point in time, pretty safe because the way they were developed as being essentially part of the closed network, which was not open, like the internet, to everyone to do strange things. The internet is becoming more and more in dangers. So one day, I do foresee the internet is running to the wall. Mm. For different reasons, the one you're referring to, which has to do with privacy, security, but also just the very fact that the addresses in the IP space as it exists now are running out. The mobile will, will more and more include also mobile internet. And there might be some difficulties in addressing the mobile internet safe usage in the context of this evolution. But um, the way they, the mobile networks are being crafted and architected is done, I think, in a much more serious and clever way mm -hmm. than the internet was 40 years ago. Uh, and we forget also the internet, is, its genesis is 40 years ago. We've been using it in South Africa for 15 years, possibly 20 years, but the genesis was, 20 year, was 40 years ago. How are you hoping to blow off the socks, blow the minds of uh, Gibbs attendees to your course from August this year? How are you going to open their eyes to the possibilities, the limitations, the opportunities that are provided by technology? They, it's by bringing value, uh, which is often more from the business or social point of view, into the existing uh, habits and, and companies. And especially I would like to highlight that it's a very key element in bringing South Africa further down the economic development and into the world markets of enabling, call it brick and mortar companies, mm -hmm by having more efficient field support operations, thanks to these things and others. Helping out, for example, agriculture, being more tied to the markets for the commodities in the agri agricultural space. Enabling people to do other things in the entertainment space. is to lift the capability in existing sectors, thanks to this capability, and its ease of access. Now, I'm going to make up a number. Tell me if I'm wrong. But I would assume the vast majority of people who use these devices, 90% of the time is for a social purpose, uh, even less possibly for a business purpose. That balance surely has got to change over time. It's going to change in ways you might not have been thinking of mm. before, which is for the health, because they may also help you monitor or at least help your doctor keep in track of you if you have a problem. It may so help in terms of education, and it may help in yet another way, which is the next wave, which is not man to machine communication or person to person communication, but machine to machine. So that when you drive down a road, your car will be interacting with the surroundings, with the lighting, with the gates, etc and many other such uses of machine-to-machine -machine communication in a wireless, secure and dependable way. That's exciting. Louis-Francois Pau is a professor at Copenhagen University. He lives in the south of France, in that country's equivalent of Silicon Valley. He's going to be at Gibbs from August to blow your socks off.